Welcome back to Channel 37. While I was in America, Casper was hard at work on the Shrek filter. And we're bringing that to you today straight from the jungle. The Shrek filter by Barnaby Walters is a reimagination of the Bustle Cinnamon, a much loved DIY filter by Czech company Bustle Instruments. Unfortunately, at this time, the Bustle Cinnamon is not available as a DIY project from them. So I thought it would be fun and interesting to build this fan version mm -hmm. of that instrument. This filter works the same as the Bustle Cinnamon, but it has several enhancements. First of all, it's a little bit bigger, which gives it a juicy cutoff knob. If you want to save space in your rack, this may not be ideal, but it does come with several feature enhancements. For example, TV control over the filter frequency and resonance. Another advantage is that Barnaby has created an interactive bill of materials, helping you quickly place the surface mount parts of this kit. But that may not even be necessary because this build is also optimized for the pick and place service of JLC PCB. So it's technically possible to order this PCB with many of the surface mount parts pre-placed and soldered by the manufacturer. What we really love about this characterful filter is that um, while most filters just cut off overtones, this one actually um, allows you to add overtones. So there's two ways that you can do this, either by boosting the resonance, and you can also boost the resonance, resonance, boost the resonance, resonance. <laughs> <laughs> I said this word a million times. Resonance. My, resonance. I wonder if your parents are gonna comment on your interesting accent. You can also boost the resonance by um, flipping to a sawtooth wave, which is really unusual because normally there's just a sine wave for that. And it adds a lot of extra overtones. And the other way you can do it is by flipping the booster switch, which adds a lot more overtones that can be filtered out later. We also have this kind of mystery switch over here, which we're not exactly sure what it does, but it does make it very distorted. I guess we could have checked the manual. Yeah, okay, we'll do our homework. Let's review it ballroom style. First category is face. What do you think of its looks? I think it's gorgeous and I am a huge fan of this big knob. It's very satisfying to play with, manipulate. What do you think? Yeah, so we specially ordered the big knob after building it so you won't see it in the build video. Um, we got a bunch of these because we're building an Oberhausen. That's gonna be fun. Um, I really like the design. I like the black faceplate a little bit better than the original wooden faceplate of the Bustle Cinnamon. Although an old wooden rack would of course be very chic, but that's not how we roll. We don't have the commitment for that. Second category is Crave. How much do we want it? I think it's, it's epically cool, actually. I mean, I've, I've never really heard a filter like it, and um, the, the sawtooth wave is it's pretty dope, not gonna lie. We're prejudiced because we love the MS-22 by 3Tom. That is such a phenomenal filter. But it's not super cheap and it's difficult to build. If you're on a budget or if you're just getting started, this one is very easy to build and is also super characterful. It has some unique features like this sawtooth resonance that will set it apart from anything else in your rack. So yeah, we crave it. Yeah, we definitely crave it. Now for the groove category. You've heard some of the compositions. Do you think it grooves? It grooves super hard and especially interacts really well with the other modules that we have on our rack. In particular, the imp. Video soon to come, get excited. And finally, the noob category. How easy is it to build? I'll take this question because <laughs> I built it. Um, it's easy. If you follow our pan baking method, which was first documented in the MS-22 video, you'll have this knocked out in just an evening, especially with the interactive bill of materials helping you to place the parts. It's going to be easy breezy. So I think it's reasonably noob friendly with the caveat that most of the parts are 0603 surface mount. I would recommend this for people just getting started with SMD because the parts list is pretty cheap so you can afford to try and debug it if it doesn't work at your first go. The only tiny piece of feedback that I would give is that there are a few part substitutions clearly indicated at the start of our video and the holes on the front panel are not the same size for all potentiometers. So you have to either order two different sizes of potentiometers or get an oyster shucking knife and enlarge some of the holes. We did the second one, it was, it was fine. So that concludes our intro and review. You're about to hear the Shrek filter on all parts of the composition in the build to follow. And if we don't see you again, please like and subscribe. It would really help us out. See you next time. The first thing to do is separate the panels. 
Use some sticky tape to prevent fiberglass dust from flying around. Use a nail file to deburr the side, using a vacuum cleaner to catch any fiberglass dust. Clean the PCB with IPA, then stick it to the working surface. Next up, apply solder paste to all of the pads. Use a thin line near the outside of IC footprints. Shrake comes with an interactive bill of materials. The easiest way to get this if you're not a GitHub user is to download a zip from this website. In the output folder, you will find an interactive bill of materials. Use this to help you place the parts. First, we make three part substitutions. Place 1K resistors on R2 and R48, and a 10K resistor on R5. Now it's business as usual. Place four 560PF capacitors. Next, three 220PF capacitors. Then, three 220NF capacitors. Two big electrolytic capacitors, these are polarized. Then, 1000NF capacitors. UF electrolytic capacitors. Two hundred PF capacitors. Two diodes. The white line goes at the bottom on the left hand side and at the top on the right hand side. And the Zener diode, the MB2S with its markings like this, two transistors, the fuses, two 15K resistors, four 470 ohm resistors, Twenty two K resistor, two forty seven K resistors, a ten K resistor, three one K resistors. Three hundred thirty K resistor. 933K resistors. Twenty one hundred K resistors. One point five K resistor, four hundred seventy K resistor, three point three K resistor, two six point eight K resistors,
Next, place the four TL074 op amps. The V2164 quad VCA. Now place the PCB in a pan and preheat for two minutes. Then ramp up the temperature for another two minutes or until all joints reflow. The through hole parts are next. First solder a corner pin for the power header, make sure it's flush, then solder all remaining pins. Next the three trim pots, note that they are each different values. Again solder one pin for each, check if they are flush, then solder the remaining pins. Clip the leads. Now place the potentiometers. These are all identical values. Place the two-way switches and the jacks. Now fit the front panel. We had to enlarge the holes for two of the potentiometers slightly with a knife. Place a few nuts, then solder all of the control hardware into place. Remove the nuts and give the board a really good clean to get rid of flux residue. We're using IPA and disposable microfiber towels. Now place all of the nuts. To place the knobs, turn down all potentiometers. Place the knobs but don't press them down, make sure all of the indicators are aligned, then press all of them down. That's your Shrake finished. Now for the calibration procedure. Plug the output into your DAW and open a tool like M-Analyzer. We are additionally using the Euroscope to visualize the signal. Turn down all switches and knobs, but put the cutoff at 9 o'clock and the resonance at maximum. Now you can dial in the resonant peak. It can be a pure sine wave or a distorted sine wave, which we're going for here to add extra character. You can see the sine wave distortion on the oscilloscope. Notice the flattening of the tops of the wave and see how this adds overtones in the spectrum analyzer. Dial down the resonance a little and open up gain all the way. Then make sure the filter can be pinged by merely sending a gate signal to the input. Next up, switch the resonance to sawtooth mode. The manual says to also flip the 5 time boost switch. Now you can tune the sawtooth resonant peak. It can be interesting to tune this at an interval of the sine wave resonance. It's an A. Is it sharp or flat relative to this? Or is it gray? I think it's slightly sharp, really slightly sharp. I don't think it's going to get any better than this. Okay, play this you again. It's okay. For the final step in tuning, turn the resonance all the way back up and try to get the cutoff knob dead center. Then use the volt per octave trim pot to get the fundamental as close to a thousand hertz as possible. This should allow the filter to track volt per octave. That's the calibration done. Let's hear if it filters.
sounds good and characterful to me.